In the season 99-2000, Roy Keane was the Footballer of the Year. And this was a bit of a throwback in terms that he was an inspirational captain and not a goal scorer like so many of the winners this century that we've seen. So could you tell me what made Roy such a, such a good player, but also such a good captain? He would never settle for second best, Roy. He would never, ever allow anybody else to settle for second best. Um, I know he and Sir Alex Ferguson weren't bosom buddies, but he was the embodiment of Sir Alex Ferguson on the football pitch. Uh, and, and Roy may rail at that. You know, he doesn't like that comparison. But if you wanted to transpose Alex Ferguson and put him in a red shirt and put him in the middle of that Manchester United team, that was Roy Keane. I think he, I think he was underestimated as a footballer. I think his passing was fantastic. It wasn't flashy. It wasn't the 40-yard Hail Mary pass. It wasn't, you know, um, it wasn't the sort of thing that you would put on a highlights reel that perhaps you know, Dennis Bergkamp would, would have or in these days Kevin De Bruyne. But he just kept Manchester United going. And he, and he, and he knew how to read the game. He knew when he needed to up the tempo, to put pressure on the opposition, to drive at them. He had a, he had a footballing intelligence that very, very few have ever matched. I think um, you, you saw in that season, the season before David Ginola won it, and Sir Alex Ferguson has never forgiven us as the Football Writers Association for picking, um, for picking um, David Ginola. But he was a victim of... Um, the Manchester United players were a victim of their, their treble-winning success. There were so many... Uh, Manchester United players that got votes um, that basically they cancelled each other out and David Ginola came through. Um, was that the right decision? Well, it was a democratic vote. The next year, this wasn't the sympathy vote for Roy Keane because the next year Roy Keane was as outstanding um, as he had been in the season before when Manchester United um, were victorious in every competition that they played. Uh, well, three of the competitions out of the four that they played. Um, and he, he drove Manchester United on. He scored vital goals. When Manchester United very rarely looked like they were going to be intimidated by perhaps an Arsenal team or, or, or other rivals, it was Roy Keane who stood there and said, you're not getting past me. And he would grab the game by the scruff of the neck and he would, he would, he would um, tailor the game to his own personality. And he, he helped other Manchester United players perform to their highest levels because he would not accept anything less than that. And you saw that David Beckham, Paul Scholes, people like that came out of themselves and developed into fantastic footballers with, with Roy Keane driving them on. I, I, uh, he was magnificent. And I have to say, I was the chairman and I phoned him up to let him know that he'd won. His, his lawyer, Michael Kennedy at the time, I spoke to him and uh, he was kind of lawyer agent. And I spoke to Michael, I said, Roy's won it. He said, oh, great, give him a call. I went, hey? He said, yeah, here's his number, give him a call. And it was, I think it was a Friday night and there was a game on, I think it was Manchester City were playing. And he took the call and he was fantastic. He gave a brilliant interview um, and basically um, he, he gave every ounce of his time that he could. It wasn't the sort of standoffish, angry Roy Keane that I'd been led to believe. Um, then he said, listen, I've missed quite a lot of the game now. Do you mind if I get back to watching it? I said, yeah, of course, Roy. Sorry, sorry to have taken up so much of your time on a, on, a, on a Friday night. He said, no problem. And he was as good as gold. There was nothing difficult about him on the night. I think he felt a little bit embarrassed. Um, subsequently, we've tried to entice him to accept our tribute award at the Savoy. He won't have it. Um, I've got a, a, even perhaps 18 months ago, it was the last time I, uh, I exchanged text messages with him. And I said, come on, Roy, you know, you deserve it. He said, I don't deserve it. I only deserve it if all my teammates from Nottingham Forest, from Cove uh, Rovers, Rangers, sorry, um, Manchester United, Celtic, Arnold, if they all uh, are there on the night celebrating the same honour with me. So it, it, sh it shows the humility of the man. And he doesn't like being singled out. And I think he felt quite uncomfortable on the night when he was um, presented with the award. Um, but, you know, he, he thoroughly deserved it. So his, uh, his public persona from being a pundit or, you know, the interviews we would see with him as captain, is, is that different to how he is as a person away from football? No, I think he's absolutely... Uh, it may be slightly exaggerated. It may be the sort of slightly hyper version. But I've been in his company um, uh, just over a year ago, um, I was with him and Martin O'Neill um, out, uh, out in Dublin. 
um, just for the evening and I was chatting with him and he was exactly the same. I think what there is is a fierce intelligence to Roy King um, and I think that's underestimated. I think people only see the angry man who, who canes players and who, who, who doesn't give, who, who gives short shrift to anybody who falls between, falls below the, the levels that he might expect. But there is a fierce intellect, a fierce football intellect um, I can understand why that upsets players when he might, when he was their manager. I can understand why um, potentially um, chairman and owners are reluctant to give him another opportunity in management, which is, I think is a shame. But he's ultimately, he's just true to himself. He expects those standards of himself and he expects others to live up to those standards. It's a, it's a, tough, it's a tough quest for people to live up to the same standards as Roy Keane. But, uh, but those Manchester United players, when he was the leader, when he was the captain, when he was driving them to success, will know just what an impact he made at Old Trafford.